shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't stay down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't stay down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, now you won't tear down, coming after me. Good morning. You got this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody out there glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Oh, bless his holy and majestic name. We are so glad here today to uh, start this service off. What better way to start a service than with a baptism? Now, let me explain to you what baptism is. What baptism is, it is a beautiful picture internally of what God has done externally. Baptism is not a prerequisite for salvation, no. Baptism won't save you. But what baptism is, it demonstrates to the world that you belong to Jesus Christ. And it is an awesome way to start a service off. And today... We have coming to be baptized, Miss Abani. She has been serving in a lot of capacities in this church, and God's been using her in great ways. And she's uh, been talking with my wife, Miss Ronnie, and said, you know, I really want to be baptized. And we're so excited that she's coming to be baptized today. Yeah. And now. It's cold. Okay. With that being said, come on, bring the other ones on too. Bring the other ones on too. Uh, she's got Miss Rachel's coming back to us, and Miss Mariah to be in the water with her. With that, so as I said before, baptism is not a prerequisite for salvation. It is a beautiful picture of what God has done on the inside of the heart. Come on, ladies, come on. So now, with that being said, with all friends and family of Miss Amani, please stand. All friends and family. Come on, ladies. Kind of since we got here, it's kind of been our tradition that uh, we have those who have been instrumental in uh, the development of uh, a disciple's life. And so with that being said, Amani, 
Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? She's excited. That's the best way to be. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 One of the commitments I tried to make to my great God and King is that we will make salvation a priority and that we will make discipleship a priority around here. And we've seen a lot of people come in this water and we want to always keep the water wet. But guess what, guys? We're going to go higher and higher into worship. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Let's go, Miss Winnie. Amen. Let's stand to our feet for worship this morning. How many came to praise the Lord this morning? I didn't say praise me. I said praise the Lord this morning. How many came with a word that already in their mouth? They was ready to praise the Lord. Said to enter into his courts with praise. Let's go. All right, we 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 gonna start. We gonna get it together. All right, let's put our hands together. Let everything that has breath say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say let everything. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm bound. I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when I'm surrounded. Cause praise is the waters my enemy shrouded. As long as I'm breathing. I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, how many came this morning to praise the Lord? Sing praise. Still in control, still in control. My praise is a witness. It's more than a sound. And my praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. And as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. Somebody get excited this morning. Say, Pray, praise the Lord. Oh, my say, I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So, how could I be? Say, I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So, how could I be? Praise, praise. Let's praise the Lord. Let's lift them higher and higher this morning. How many came to praise the mighty God this morning? Yeah. I praise cause you're sovereign. I praise cause you reign. I praise cause you rose and defeated in the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. I praise cause you're true. I praise cause there's nobody great. Sing with me, sing. I praise cause you're sovereign. I praise God you reign. I praise God you rose and to be. I pray, I praise God you're faithful. Praise God you're true. Say praise God, there's nobody greater than you. Say praise the Lord. Oh my soul. Come on, come on, come on and praise. Praise the Lord. Oh my soul. Praise. 
You didn't tell you this morning, say praise, praise Lord. Oh, say I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet. My God is alive, so how can I keep it? Say I can't be quiet, I won't be quiet. My God is alive, so how can I keep it? Say I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So how can I keep it? Let your voice say praise. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Let's say praise the Lord, oh my soul. How many came to rejoice the Lord this morning? Say praise the Lord, oh my soul. Hey, let everything, let everything. That has breath. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. If you got breath in your body. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say let everything. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Amen. I want to sing so heaven can hear me this morning. How many of you know that all the glory belongs to the Lord this morning? We serve a good God who deserves some great praise this morning. We're going to give him all the glory this morning. Yeah. We serve a mighty God. Hey. And he deserves a mighty praise. Ooh. We serve a good God. How many know we serve a sovereign God, a faithful God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we love you, Lord. We extol you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sing, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. It's real easy. It just says, all the glory belongs to you, O oh God. Sing. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, O oh God. Doesn't belong to what we have. Belongs to the Lord this morning. Sing with us. Say, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, O oh God. All the glory belongs to you are God, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Y'all keep singing that. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. And we sing, all the glory belongs to you. Lift your voice and say, all the glory belongs to you. Oh. Every good thing that happens to me, Lord, all the glory belongs to you, Lord. Say, all the glory belongs for waking me up, all the glory belongs to and started me on my way, Lord. All the glory belongs to, to you, oh God. You, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Y'all should know it by now. Say, all the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah. And we say ha, le, le, lu, ya, say ha, le, lu, ya, say ha, ha, le, lu, say Yahweh, 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 we praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we praise, say all the glory belongs to you, yeah. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, yes it does. Say all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah. And we sing, all the glory belongs to, to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to to you, all God. To you, all God. To you, all God. 
All the glory belongs to to you, all God. Only to you, all God. It's simple, but it means a lot this morning. Say, all the glory belongs to to you, all God. To you, all God. To you, all God. Yeah. And we give him the highest praise, and we say, ha. All the glory belongs to you. Say all the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to we sing to the Lord this morning. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Say all the glory belongs, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. For you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Sing it, Shay. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. You deserve it. All of my praise belongs to you. All of my praises belongs to you. Oh, all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. You get the glory out of me, oh God. All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Yeah, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Yeah, because you deserve it. 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 Oh, you deserve it. You deserve it. You've been so good and you've been so good. You deserve it. I give you all the honor. You deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah.
My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah it belongs, belongs to, you. to you. I give you the highest praise. My hallelujah. My hallelujah oh. belongs to you. Father, we come before you once more to give you honor, to give you glory, to worship you. We come before you as a body of believers to worship you in spirit and in truth. <laughs> Jesus, you said my father is looking for true worshipers. Those who will worship the father in spirit and in truth. Now, God, we come before you beseeching you as the great God of heaven who sits high and look low. God, we need you and we need you now. Without you, God, we can do nothing. But God, our hearts sing a resounding chorus of, is there anything too hard for God? God, there's nothing too hard for you to do. And so God, we love you so much because you first loved us God. even when we were unlovable you loved us and you sent forth your darling son and because of that God our hearts are overwhelmed we love you now we invite you into this service you come and be a part for you are the audience of one in which we are worshiping it's not about the crowd but it's about our creator and so, God, we pray for Israel. Your word says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that your peace would take over that land. But, God, we also pray for this country, your eagle, whom you've established on your principles, your oracles, your word. God, in this election season, God, we pray that heads would be calm. We, we pray that your glory would be felt that people will know that there is a God in this land. That we would seek your face. Find out what it is that you want us to do. And we thank you for what you're going to do. Now God we also thank you for. Those who have come far. All the way from Colorado here to. Serve the people of Nacogdoches. God we lift up the Bible college. They come to work in Mission Nac. We thank you so much for what you're about to do through them. But God, I thank you for a little old place, 2220 East Main Street, where the presence of God rests, rule, and abide, and you reign, God. You are God, and there is no other. It is not about some pontificator. It is about our creator, who's great, who's glorious, and who's magnanimous. And we say, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being God. Now have your way in this service, God. As Papa has been doing, we call those back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Oh, you said in your word, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. And so, God, as we come back and fellowship with one another, we pray, God, that we will feel the power of God, the presence of God amongst the people of God, so that we know that we are belonged, that we are loved and accepted. We thank you, God, for what you're about to do in this worship service today. Because <laughs> guess what, God? I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, bless his name. I am a child of God. And we thank him. We love you. Have your way, God. Have your way. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen.
There is a word from the Lord today. We're going to be reading from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And one of my favorite topics, weeping may endure. <laughs> like Pastor said, we got some Bible readers in here, don't we? We may do it for night what? Amen. Can we stand for the reading of God's word this morning, please? Our focus will be Esther 4, verses 1 to verses 3. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Hmm. So Esther's maids and her chamberlain came and told it to her. Then was the king, a queen, exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiments to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him. But he received it not. May God be pleased with the reading and hearing, but especially the doing of his holy and divine word. You may be seated in his presence. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Okay, so you missed your cue right there. Let me see if I can give it to you again. So I'm pausing and taking my time as I present that particular scripture. And so you should already start getting excited because of the scripture. You understand what I'm trying to say? And it's okay for you to go ahead and start saying, thank you, Jesus, because I was glad. When they said, anybody out there glad to be in the house of the Lord today, worshiping the one true king in the person of Jesus Christ? Anybody out there today can say, thank you, Jesus, because you've been so good to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Anybody out there got that testimony that God has been good? With that being said, we want to welcome you today to the Nacogdoches. Bible Fellowship Church, where the mission of this great church, the mission that God has given us, is to expand his kingdom. That's what God's called us to do. Uh, the vision, what we envision as a body of believers here at the Nacogdoches Bible Church is we see disciples making disciples, and the way we do it is through relationships. Yeah. Our mantra, our moniker, our saying, our slogan, what we say here at the Nacogdoches Bible Church is that we make relationships for all of eternity. If you are a blood-bought, blood-washed child of the living king, we get to hang out for all of eternity. Yeah. Now, if you don't know who Jesus is, oh, my heart breaks. My heart breaks. My heart breaks. But we can take care of that today. We'll take care of that, and we'll talk about that in just a moment as we get ready to uh, move into what we're going to move into in communion. Uh, with that being said, I just want to say once again on behalf of this family of faith, thank you and welcome to this family of faith. If this is your first time donning the doors of this sacred place, uh, I promise I will not have you to stand up and give me a dissertation or anything of that creed. Uh, what we will do is ask you to take out your device, go ahead and get out your device, and go to uh, the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the Nacogdoches Bible Fellowship app. Can you just got me there, Reverend? Thank you. Download our app, and there on the app, you'll see the connect card. You can see where you connect, and we would love to connect with you. So please, if this is your first time donning the doors of this sacred place, download that app and go ahead and fill out the connect card. Now, for everyone else in here, 
On that app also is a place for a prayer request. If you have any uh, prayer requests that you would like for me and my staff to pray for, it is our duty, it is our privilege, it is our pleasure to pray for you. So with that being said, go ahead and download that app and I'll do a little something with it later on. Now, also, if you see something later on tonight and the number says 214, it is not spam, okay? Or a bill collector. <laughs> it may be me, so check it out tonight. So just would you please fill that out for us. Oh, with that being said, uh, one of my favorite times in the service uh, where we meet and greet one another and welcome. Here's what I learned, baby. Sometimes when you look into the eyes of someone, there is a hormonal transfer that takes place, and it's called oxytocin. So when you look into the eyes of people and you connect in a social setting, oxytocin begins to release the hormone in the brain. So here's what I need you to do. Go ahead and give someone a look, a word, or a touch. Now, please be respectful. There are still some that are, uh, uh, would like to have some personal space, so please be respectful of that. But if you read the room really well, you see, give someone a look, a word, or a touch. God bless you. Let's stand and greet one another. Kick it! our way back to our seats. I love the sound of the buzz of bees as we meet and greet into the house of the day. Um, wanted to make it official if we could. Want to welcome our students from the Bible College from Denver uh, to here to serve. We want to say thank you on behalf of the city of Nacogdoches. Thank you so much. Uh, JB, go ahead and get started getting set up. Get the young guys, let them know where you want. We're going to go right in. Okay. Um, now it's time for some family business, if you will. Um, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, we would ask that you not partake uh, in the Lord's Supper. But we can take care of that right now. It's as simple as ABC. A, 
admit, admit that you are a sinner, that you've transgressed the laws of God, that you in your way have rebelled against a transcendent, magnificent God. Be, believe, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And confess him as Lord. As simple as ABCs. Simple as ABCs. And it's a simple prayer. Even something as simple as Lord save me. Now a simple prayer won't save you. But saying that simple prayer from your heart. That will. Yeah. As we. Uh, get ready to partake of the elements. We God has led us over this whole month of February, even into March, to partake of the elements. If you have not uh, received a communion cup, would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Please raise your hand if you do not have a communion cup. We have one up here. Um, Miss, up oh, one right here. One right here. Anyone else? If you've not received a communion cup. Now, the scripture teaches us uh, as a precious pedagogic not to uh, do this, as we say back in the day, willy-nilly. Yeah. yeah. This is a reverent time as we are ascending higher into the throne of grace. And it may be something that God is stirring up in your heart. If there is some sin he needs to deal with, if there is some hurt if there is some alt in the heart right now, this is the time uh, that we want to want to deal with that. Uh, if you could, Miss Winnie, would you give me some some music, some soft music, to where we get ready to uh, enter into this time? And, and whatever it is that He is bringing to your remembrance right now, uh, 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 allow Him to deal with what He needs to deal. <laughs> he's me he's lowly he's mild he's a great God <laughs> you're holding on to something that he says let me have it I can do more with it than you can let me have it let, 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 let it go let it go let, let me have it I'm going to read the scripture as I often do as we partake of the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. If you would, go ahead and give me that scripture, Reverend. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup ah, is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Please stand. We stand in honor of our great God and King as we partake of the Lord's Supper. But let him, let him, deal, let him deal with you. If you would, go ahead and remove the first layer to expose the bread. And if you are proficient at taking back this layer of film, help your neighbor because it can be somewhat difficult. <laughs> Regardless of your educational status, it can be difficult. So help your neighbor. And when you have it, please raise it up in honor of our great God and King. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible tells us that he was beaten, battered, and bruised, and he did it 
for us. Pastor David, would you thank him for his body? Father, Amen. This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be partakers of it. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible also teaches that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Aren't you glad today that he shed his blood for you? And he did it because he loved you. Pastor Davis, would you thank him for the shedding of the blood? Hallelujah. Precious Father, not only did you shed your blood Take on flesh. Not only did you allow me to be bruised and battered, but Father, you allowed the blood yes, to go from your body. So that though I sin, we have the God of Yes, yes, God. What? Why did you continue? Thank you, Lord, for gave your redeeming blood. So we always love you. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be protected today. Tradition has it they went out singing a hymn. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Amen. Uh, we're up to the part. Brother Mike, would you get in the middle? Take the middle for me. We're up to the part where we're going to worship our great God uh, twofold. We're going to worship him in song and with the silver. If you could, Deacon Upshaw, if you could take this side over here for me, please. Side over here. Right there, Mike. It's good. It's good. I'm going to pray. And we're going to worship a great God and King through our offering, as well as through our worship. And so we're so grateful that he gives us the opportunity to participate with him through the offering. On this side over here, brother. Up shot. This side over here. Thank you. Pray with me. Turn God, our Father, we come before you once more. This is our offering. May it be a sweet-smelling savor to you. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And God, it is our privilege, our pleasure to give back just a tenth to you. But God, there are some here that want to give even more because you've been so good to them. And we thank you for this opportunity to give and to worship you with our gifts. We love you, we thank you, and we honor you. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. How many know we don't just worship wow. with uh, singing and, and worship doesn't just start when the music starts. We worship the Lord with our lives. We worship the Lord with our funds. We worship the Lord with obeying him. Um, so 
We're going to worship the Lord through song right now. We're going to sing a song called I Trust in God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. And what he did for me on Calvary's more than enough. Y'all sing with me. Say, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. Say, he will never fail. He's my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. If it's a measure, come on, Crystal. start failing us now yeah we sing I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why I trust in him that's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. Somebody sing that this morning. Say, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard. And he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trusted, that's why I sought, I sought the Lord. In the middle of the night, he didn't hear you. I sought the Lord, and he heard. Even your moans and groans, the Holy Spirit will translate for you. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust in you. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. People might 
like failure, but the Lord will never fail you. Say, I, I trust in God. He's my Savior, the only one who will never fail. He will never fail. Say, I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he heard. How many have been seeking the Lord this morning? How many are waiting him to answer all your prayers? Say, I sought the Lord. And he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust. Say, I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. And that's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. Say, I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Say, I trust in God. He's my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Because Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. Say, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Because he's never let me down. And he's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? Say, you won't. Sing it out, say, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't fail. Oh, the rain, it came, the winds, they blew, but my house was built on you, and I'm safe with you say I'm gonna make it through. Oh, rain came, the rain, the wind blew, wind blew, but my house was built on you, and I'm safe with you. Say I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Say I'm gonna make it through. Cause I'm standing, cause I'm standing strong on you. Oh, I'm gonna make it through. Cause my house was built on you. Say Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand. And when everything around, when he's shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Because he's never let me down. He's faithful through every season. So why would he fail now? He won't. 
He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. Cause I will build my life upon your love. And it is a firm foundation. And I will put all my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. Sing holy, there is no one like you. Say there is none beside you. Lord, open up my eyes in wonder and show me. Who you are, Lord, fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is my firm foundation and I will put all my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken oh say I will not be shaken and when depression comes I I will not be shaken when my finances are low I I will not be shaken When I don't know what to do, I I will not be shaken. And when my past comes, I will will not not be shaken. And when addiction comes, you will will not not be shaken. And when rejection comes, you will will not be shaken. And when fear comes, I I will will not be shaken. Cause I will build my life upon your love. And it is my firm foundation. And I will put all my trust in you alone. And I will not. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. Till I, till I die. Stay on the battlefield. Pray with me, saints. Turn to God, our Father, we come before you once more to give you honor and glory. You are a marvelous, magnanimous, magnificent God. And besides you, there is no other. (laughs) You are awesome. The ancient of days. My Lord and my God. I come before you saying, thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you, Father, for wooing me. Thank you, Father, for calling me. 
We bless your holy and majestic name. It's preaching hour. I come before you as your puny pulpiteer, saying, hide me behind your cross. Let your people see you and not me, for God, I can do nothing to help them. God, I can't even help myself. But once again, God, I give that imperative. Is there anything too hard for God? If you freely have given us your son, there is nothing you won't do. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. God, we bless you and we honor you and we magnify you. Now, God, I come before you and I ask, God, that you would reveal back what we've talked about in private, that you would reveal it publicly so that these people would know that you love them and that you have a word for them. He wasn't here. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. God, we come before you asking that you would anoint the reading, the preaching, and the hearing of your word. Let your word go forth as a sounding gong, a clarion call to let us know you have everything in control. God, we bless you for what you're about to do. We love you and we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Loose me now. And let me go. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. And all the people said, Amen. For the few moments that it is ours to share together, I have one question for you. Have you ever been there? Have you been there when you received some news and at the reception of this news, it was as if you had gotten a gut punch. Yeah. Have you ever been there to where you found out some new information and when you found out this information, all of the air in your lungs left. Have you ever been there? <laughs> that when you heard what was about to transpire, that you were left with trepidation. Have you been there? <laughs> but can I ask a better question than that? Have you been there when you know what you are doing is following the dictates, the commands of God, only to find yourself in a situation to where you have been gut punched? Uh, have you been there that you know every move you made, every step you took, it was in order and in accordance to the word of God. And to find out that you have now received some information that has taken your breath away. Have you been there? Yeah. I cannot help as I am in the first part of my prologue to think of one of Moshe. Uh, do you know who Moshe is? You know who Moshe is. Moses. Uh, yeah. He was on the backside of the mountain shoveling sheep dung. And then one day he saw a bush that was being consumed and it called to him. It was none other than God himself who made the bush to burn on fire but not consume the bush. And he told Moshe, Moses. Take your Jordans off because where you are standing is on holy ground. Now, I don't know if Moses wore Jordan back then, but we're going to see it for the sake of the sermon. Yeah. He told him one Moses, Moses, go down to Pharaoh and tell that 
puny potentate to let my people go. Yep. Moses then goes to Pharaoh and tells him what the Lord God Almighty has ordered him to say. And he has told Pharaoh to let the people go. And with the mighty hand of God, ten strong plagues, he then issues on the people of Egypt, showing that the pantheon of gods of Egypt are puny and that the great God of heaven rules, reigns supreme. And he then, on the last plague, kills the firstborn of the Egyptians and the people of Israel come out of Egypt because of the Passover. And what God told Moses to do was to cover the doorposts of the and the lintel with the blood. Oh my God, my God, my God. It's getting good to me right about here because you've got to understand, I got to step out of my homily and into Jubilee because I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood shed for me. Anybody out there glad about it because it was the blood of Jesus Christ that delivered you? And Moses, now he is leading the First Baptist Church of the Wilderness, some three million people going to Sinai. But here's what God told Moses. He said, hey, Mo, don't go to the left, to the left, to the left. Now, that was for my young folks. You understand what I'm trying to say. Take a right. Go down through the Midianite spice trade route down to the Red Sea. And have you ever been there? You are following God, following his orders to the T. You've dot every I. You've crossed every T. You've done exactly what God has told you to do. And you find yourself in a trichotomous situation. Ah, bells of fun and pyathara on the side of you, so you can't go that way. Ah, ah, the Red Sea is in front of you, so you can't go straight ahead. (laughs) Pharaoh's army is coming behind you, so you can't go back to where you come from. And you don't know what you're going to do. And you hear the hoofs of the army coming down on you to destroy. Have you ever been there? Yeah. God, I've done everything you told me. Why is that what I'm hearing doesn't line up with what you told me to do? <laughs> but I need to tell you something. Now I'm going to get into the second part of my prologue. See, when you get that kind of news that gives you a gut punch, the thing that you need to understand is that the great God of heaven, he does not operate like us. Okay, to my to my Bible students, my, my students, when, when I pause, that's when you're supposed to give an antiphonal call and response. Right, Pastor? Yeah, preach, Pastor Russell. Go ahead and participate in this sermon. So you see, the more you participate, the faster I go. You understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. See, God does not operate like you and I. See, he understood that you had a need that you couldn't meet. And understand this, baby, because God so loved the world that he sent forth his only begotten son, even though you and I rebelled against a holy God. Now, see, if I was God, and go ahead and tell your neighbor, thank God, Rod ain't God. Yeah, yeah. If I was God, I would have killed you where you stood. But what God did, because he doesn't operate like us, the Bible teaches us as a precious pedagogic, is that his ways, there you go, now you understand. His thoughts, and so he sent forth his son. Oh my God. He sent forth his son to go to an old rugged cross for you and for me. If I could say it this way, maybe you will get it. God sent God to go die for Rod. Because God sent God to die for Rod, God then can take Rod back to God. Yeah, Because God sent God to die for Rod, he loved Rod so much 
that God sent God to live inside of Rod. Yes, and because God sent God to die for Rod, and then he sent God to live inside of God, there's going to be one bad day. I'm going to get there and I'm going to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you to the Father. Thank you to the Son. Thank you to the Holy because his ways are not our ways. He doesn't operate like us. Not only, not only does he not operate like us, he doesn't officiate like us. See, can I help you? See, you, you, you running around here wearing yourself to death trying to maintain control. Yeah. Who was that for? I don't know who that was for right there. See, because God doesn't officiate like us. He is still in control. The rain came. The wind blew. But God, he hasn't failed yet. Ooh, can I help you? God is in so much control. That when he created the cosmos and when he created the oceans on this big blue marble, he told the ocean, you can go so far, but I want you to stop right there. Oh, my God, my God. Do you remember what he told Job uh, when he's talking to Satan, who was in regards to Job? He said, Satan, you can do this. You can do that, but you can't do this and you can't do that. The great God of heaven, child of God. He is still in control. He's not worried about no Republicans, no Democrats. He's not worried about no election. He's not worried about no gas shortages. He's not worried about no food shortage. He is still in control. Last time I checked, the scale is still going up. I'm still eating, getting fatter, if you understand what I'm saying. And the reason why the great God of heaven with his immensity self, he is still in control. Did you hear what I just said? Ah. Ah. See, when you're going through situations like you're going through and you've been gut punched, see, you're thinking God is not reacting the way you think he needs to react. I told you because he doesn't operate like us. He doesn't officiate like us. And he doesn't obfuscate like us. Yeah. What that means, uh, that he can bring the enemy to obscurity in your life. See, you can't stop the devil from doing what the devil does. But the word of God, yeah can stop the devil right in his tracks. Oh, can I give you some Bible to preach what, to prove what I'm trying to say today? Do you remember when Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and he yelled out, it is finished? Uh, what he was saying, the debt is now paid. And because the debt is paid, the enemy, you can't go any further. I love the way our brother propaganda said, all of heaven cheered because the check cleared. Anybody in the house today glad about it because Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe because I owed a debt that I couldn't pay. I love the way the songwriter said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain. But that's what he did, y'all. He washed me. Anybody in the house can dare say it with me? He washed me. He washed me white as snow. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Today, today, today in this text that we're about to traverse, in this word that we're about to walk in, as we continue our hike in this holy history known as the book of of Esther, we're in the ninth installment in our sermon series that we have entitled A Partnership of Preservation. And now we're seeing the children of Israel, they have received some horrible news. They have now been made aware of that lousy law that that horrible Haman has now made. And they have found out that on a certain day, 
all the Jews in the Medo-Persian Empire ought to be killed. And this caused them to weep. This caused them to mourn. This caused them to fast because they have been made aware of this horrible law. But you know what I love about scripture, Papa? The thing that I love about the word of God is that it is not fantasy. It is not legend. It is the inerrant, unadulterated word of God. But it is laced with reality. Ooh, that's what I love about God and his word. He lets you see the reality of life. That there are times you get a word when your heart is broken because of the information you just received. And it causes you to feel like your lungs have collapsed on you. Anybody been there? Oh my God, my God, my God. And it even causes you to cry. Yeah. You know what I love about Christianity? There are going to be some dark days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the Bible teaches us when, as a delicious didactic, here's what it teaches us. Weeping may endure for a night. Yeah. Yeah. See, there may be some times that you're going to cry at night. But there's going to be some times that you're not going to sleep on some silk sheets. You're going to sleep on some tear-stained sheets. But there may be some times that you are going to be up all night and you can't even count sheep to put yourself to sleep. And you're walking around waking everybody up, stumbling in the dark. Don't say amen, baby. Yeah, because you're worried about what you're going through. But, oh my God, weeping may endure for a night, but God, uh, you, you, you go ahead and bump your poop on and tell them weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, jubilation comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, joy comes in the morning. Jesus comes in the morning. Oh, let me look at my first point here so I can get us out of here so we can get on to this barbecue. Uh, the first thing that I want to look at today is what I call the morning Mordecai. Verse number one. Give me verse number one, Reverend. Look what it says there in the text. When Mordecai learned that all had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ash and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. <laughs> yeah yeah see see now what's going on Mordecai is not experiencing the good news of the gospel he is now experiencing the bad news of a horrible Haman who has come up with a dastardly decree and he has said that in the Medo-Persian empire all of the Jews are to be killed and Mordecai is now crying aloud, and he is now in sackcloth and ash. What he has done is taken off his regular garment and put on the garment of a goat or a sheep, which is rough and rugged, and now he is wearing that garment, and he has thrown upon him his head that of ashes to show that he is in mourning. Now, how did we get here to where he is in mourning now. It gets a little deeper. The reason why we are here, because he stood ten toes down and he looked at Haman and said, I'm not bowing down to you because I am a Jew. In other words, I serve the one true God in the person of Jesus Christ. And I'm standing here. Yes, I'm crying right now. Yes, I'm mourning right now. But let me tell you something, baby. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to back up. I'm going to stand ten toes down. And for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. Yeah. That, that, that's why he's there 
because he didn't bow and Haman has made this decree. Have you ever been there? Your decision that you made to serve God, it impacts everyone around you. And you think, God, did I make the right decision? Now everybody is going to be in a situation. But here's what the Bible says. Look what the Bible says. Uh, he cried out with a loud, bitter cry. Ooh, I like this. Now, Papa, I'm already enjoying my text. Now, I don't know if y'all enjoying it yet, but I'm already enjoying my text. You understand what I'm trying to say. See, that word, Amara, when you do an investigation of the text, what you find out, that word bitter is the same word that we have. Uh, it's called Mara in the Hebrew. It's the same word that Naomi used when she came back from the ancestral land of Moab and they said, hey, that name, name, hey, name, name. She said, don't call me name, name. Call me Mara. Call me bitter. Yeah. That's what I love about God. See, there are times in your life here, every day ain't the, in the sweet by and by. There's going to be some days where you got some bitterness of soul. Because even they had to say, I went out full and God has dwelt with, dealt with me and I came back empty. Don't call me Nene. Don't call me Naomi. Don't call me Pleasant. Call me Bitter. Yeah. Same word, Papa. Same word. The same word that was used when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt into the wilderness and God had done a great work at the Red Sea. And when they were looking for water, they came to the oasis, but the water they were about to drink, it was bitter. But the Bible teaches that's another precious pedagogic that Moses took a tree and put it into the waters and the bitter waters became sweet. Oh, can I make a starological application? That's the doctrine of the cross. Can I help you today? The only thing that can turn your bitter situation into a sweet situation is the cross of Calvary. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart were rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And guess what, folks? I'm happy. Oh, anybody out there happy because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Oh, but I'm not done. I'm still on this point. It's a good point here. Because when you do a further investigation of the text, that word uh, Mara, it means bitter, embittered. But here's what happens. It transitions, watch this now, into strong or strength. Right, right, right. Preach, Pastor Rod. Let me see if I can say it again. See, when you're doing the investigation of the text, that word and you deep, deep into it, it transitions from bitterness into strong and strength. Can I help you today, baby? See, sometimes God will allow you to go through a bitter situation and he's going to transform you into someone who can handle that situation and you become strong because of that situation. Anybody have know what I'm talking about? Yes, you used to be bitter, but God has made you better. You used to be in sadness, but now he's giving you some sweetness. You used to have mourning, but he gave you some joy. Joy because he took you through that situation. Oh, hear me, child of God. The only one who can do that is God who can make you strong in a situation. Oh, my God, my God. What does the Bible, the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8. Give me that scripture, Reverend. Look what it says there in Nehemiah. Uh, then he said to them, go your way. Eat some barbecue. Yeah. Drink some red Kool-Aid. Yeah. Yeah, and send portions. Now take some plates home to people. After we get through eating, they make sure some people get some other portions to those who nothing is prepared. For this is the day. Hold it to the Lord. Do not sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Anybody glad about it today? That the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, and nine, and he said to me, Yeah, 
My grace is sufficient. Anybody been able to get through because of the grace of God? It was sufficient to carry you through. Oh, I like this, baby. Look what it says. For my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And look what Paul said. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Oh, my God, my God. He has a way, baby. When you are weak, he can make you strong. Did you hear what I just said? Uh, uh, but I'm not done, Papa. I ain't done. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, you know it. I can do all things. Things. T-H-A. NG. That's a different level of things, stability, things, stification. Now, none of those are words, but they sound like they should be. You understand what I'm trying to say? He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when you're doing the investigation of the text, Miss Winnie, what you see in there that it is in the present active participle. And all of that, who cares that you don't went to the cemetery, Pastor Rob? What that got to do with me? The thing it has to do with you is that when you come on Monday, He'll strengthen you. When you come on Tuesday, he'll strengthen you. When you come on Wednesday, he'll strengthen you. When you come on Thursday, he'll strengthen you. In January, February, March, April, May, June, July, he will strengthen you. Hear me, baby. Weeping may endure for a night. Oh, my God. But joy comes in the morning. Oh, my God, my God. Not only do we see the morning, Malachi, but look at what I call the moving mourner. Verse 2. Look, Give me verse 2. I'm rubbing. He went as far as the front of the king's gate. For no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. <laughs> I like this. Oh, I'm enjoying my text. Now, if you ain't enjoying it, it's okay. I'm enjoying my text. I'm having a good time by myself. You understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, 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 the thing I, I, I need you to get today, okay, here's what's going on. Remember, Mordecai has been made part of the king's court at the king's gate. Uh, we said before that he is a magistrate or a judge that God has planted into the king's gate. He's already planted in a position so that he can help the people. But the Bible says that he was covered in sackcloth and ash and he only went as far as the king's gate. He was abiding by the natural law of man yeah, because it did not violate the law of God. So he adhered to that law. Now what we see there is that he has on sackcloth and ash. In other words, this sackcloth and ash is a garment of grief. Yeah. Yeah. He is dressed because of his depression. Uh, yeah. A garment because of his grief. Yeah. A wardrobe based off his word. Yeah. Oh, can I help you today? Uh. Sometimes the way we look tells others of our situation. Preach, Pastor Rod. Yeah. I mean, so, but I need you to understand something. There are times when God said, now you don't went through enough grief. I need you to lay aside that garment. Ooh. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Papa, do you remember the episode when Jesus came through Jericho? And there was this brother on the side of the road begging named Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. And when Jesus came by, he said, Jesus, he said, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people said, hey, man, you be quiet, man. You quit begging all the time. Be quiet. We don't hear from you. And he cried out in the morning. And Jesus stopped and told Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, to come to him. And the Bible says, he left his garment. Yeah. See, yes, we've been made endure for a night, 
But there are times, child of God, when you've got to let go some things when which people identify you with so you can move into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. You're no longer identified by your dress. You're no longer labeled by the label. You are now one who says, I'm leaving that stuff. Oh, who am I talking to? There is somebody in the house. You've got to leave that garment of your past behind and move into what God has for you. Oh, I'm liking this. But here's what I like about this, Winnie. Here's what he did. He went to the king's gate. He didn't let his grief take him too far. <laughs> you didn't enjoy that idea. I sure had a good. Let me tell the tree. See, here's the tree. He didn't let his grief take him too far. Because sometimes, baby, we are allowing the grief of our hearts to take us to a place that we can't return from. We are allowing our grief to take us to a place of fear. We are allowing our grief to take us to a place where we're frozen. We are allowing our grief to take us to a place where we feel forgotten. Oh my God, my God. Oh, the Bible tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us and he will not forget you, baby. But listen to what I love that he did. Here's what he did. Here's what he did. He went to the king's gate. See, he had enough sense to go to the king. There are certain things you don't need to take to Facebook. There are certain things you need to take to the one whose face is in the book, and that's the one of Jesus Christ. Yeah. There are certain things you don't need to take to Instagram. Uh, yeah, you need to take it to Emmanuel. Yeah. There are certain things you don't need to take to Twitter. You need to take to the triune Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Because when you take it to him, he can turn that thing around. Oh, you want to play with me today? What the Bible say? What the Bible says? The Bible says in Psalms 35. Yeah, uh, 30 verse 5. Give me that. You know I had to put this scripture in here today, Papa. Here it is. His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy, Jesus, joy comes in the morning. I can't help but to do my best. Dr. Kerry Wesley's rendition, how you say, but joy, joy, it comes in the morning. Anybody glad about it? That yes, weeping may endure, but joy, it comes in the morning. But what does the Bible say when we take it to the king? Psalm 30, verse 11, look what it says there in Psalm. You have turned me from my mourning into dancing, and you will put off my sackcloth and clothe me with gladness. Oh, hear me, child of God. You start taking your situation to the king because he can turn that thing around. Oh, my God, what does the Bible say in Isaiah 61, verse number 3? Look what the Bible says. In Isaiah 61, verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, <laughs> the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Ah, this is why he do it. This is why he'll do that, why he'll give you beauty for ashes, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Did you hear that? There's sometimes you're going through what you're going through. So he can then lift that burden off of you and you give glory and honor to God. Take me to the king. 
I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lead me at the throne. Lead me there alone to gaze upon your glory and to sing to you this song. Please take me to the king. Oh my God, my God. There are times in your life, baby, that you got to go to the king of kings and the Lord of lords and it's none other than Jesus Christ. And you get there and you start understanding that he's been good to you even while you're going through what you're going through, God is still good to you. Let me get this last one. I got to get this out of here and we're done. We're done. And not only have we saw the moving mourner, we saw the mourning uh, Mordecai. But with this last point, look at the multitude mourns. Yeah, verse three and I'm done. And in every province where the king's command and decrees arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ash. Yeah. Now everyone is dealing with this lousy law made by the horrible Haman. Yeah. And now we're all mourning. Because remember, remember we said on last week, that Haman in his wickedness came up with the date that was the date for this massacre before that of Passover. And all of the people are mourning because of that. Okay, here, let me tell this last story and I'm done. Here it is. Here it is, Papa. Here it is. Yeah. Um, on last year, uh, when my big fella, he uh, decided to go to Texas State, left UIW, and he went to Texas State, everything was going great. Uh, Jojo, they, they took him to the media day. You don't take an offensive lineman to the media day. You know, it's got to be the quarterback, you know, and a defensive captain. So they took the big fella, right? And, and he went to New Orleans, had a good time. They put his name in the uh, uh, top 100 freak athletes in uh, college football. Six foot five, 320 pounds. And he moves like a good say. Yeah. Uh, and so also they put his name on the uh, Senior Bowl watch list. So he, if he, everything would have went the way it's supposed to, he probably would have played in this past Senior Bowl, right? So everything was going good. First game of the year, they played Baylor, and they beat those Baylor Bears. One Texas State come out of nowhere, and they then come onto the scene, and they beat the Baylor Bears. Everything's going great. My big fella, he was in there battling. Yeah. The thing that I remember the most about that first game is Papa, when he got off the bus, right, he had a look on his face. And I almost cried because he was pretty because he had a look that he was ready to go do war. He was pretty, right? And when he got off the bus, I said, what I always said, baddest dude on the field, baby. Baddest dude on the field. And he came over and he gave me some dap, but he kept that look on his face and he played a great game. Second week of the season, I'm thinking, oh, man, they, gone. they got a chance to go 4-0, possibly make the top 25. The game is a tough game against UTSA, and they're fighting back and forth midway in the second quarter. <laughs> oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Is that there's a player from Texas State down. And before they even said anything, my heart dropped. Something inside of me knew. Nash Jones. He's down. My heart sank. Now, I'm in Nacogdoches watching the game. He's in San Antonio. And I couldn't get there to be for my baby. It made it even worse. I look at my phone. My baby tried to call me three times. <laughs> and I wasn't there for him. I finally get him. He said, Daddy, I broke my leg. Daddy, I broke my leg. Everything's gone. Daddy, I, I'm not going to make the pros now. Daddy, everything. My whole career is gone. And we cried together. Trying to be 
the man of God that I am, I said, okay, big fella, God's doing the work. He's in the work. He's in a process of doing something with this injury. He, he's doing the work. And, and my big fella said this. He said, daddy, respectfully, I don't want to hear that God stuff right now. <laughs> Anybody been there? Yeah. Couple weeks pass. He's now in recovery. And he comes back and says, Dad, I, I, I want to say, I'm, I'm, I apologize for that earlier. Me and God has worked some things out. I'm going to make it back for the eighth game of the year. Uh, uh, coaches came to him as he was working his way back. He said, Now, Nash, you can sit this uh, one game out and you'll have two more years to play football. If you sit one game out, he said, no, coach, the Lord is telling me to play the rest of this year. He goes on, gets back in. He's not the same big Nash because he's working through an injury. They make a bowl game. Here it is. Big Nash, promising, potentially going to the pros, broke his leg. And cried all night. And we cried with him. In the bowl game. Here's what happened. They are winning the game. But to seal the game. They call the golden bear. And what the golden bear is. It's the play. In which the big fella. Who's been blocking for the quarterback. The whole time. He gets out into the field. And he catches the ball and he scores a touchdown. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, he went through a tough season, baby. But God made a way for him to get back on the field and he even scored a touchdown. But it gets better than that because when he did the interview, here's what he said. You would think. The most important thing of this game is me scoring a touchdown. That ain't the most important thing. It was to see my family and to see my daddy and to fall into his arms. Who in the house know what I'm talking about today? That you may go through some things, but you can fall into the arms of the Father and he will comfort you. You can fall into the arms of the Father and he will keep you. You can fall into the arms of the Father and he will sustain you. Anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You go through some hard times, but joy comes in the morning. You lost mama, but joy comes in the morning. You lost your job, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. Hey, but joy. Joy, I said joy. It comes in the morning. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There may be one here today that you don't know this great God who's able to deal with life. You don't know Jesus Christ as a pardon of your sin. Yeah. Today's a good day. I told you earlier, simple as ABCs, A, admit, B, believe, C, confess him as Lord. That's your first invitation. Second invitation. God may be calling you here to this family. Right now. Come by letter. Come by watch care. Uh, what watch care is to our college kids while you're here in Nacogdoches at SFA or AC. You don't give up your home membership while you're here. We'll love on you and grow you in the nurturing and mission of the Lord. That's your second invitation. Third invitation. Come to the altar. Bring it to the king. Your heart may be torn in pieces. That may be your offering. Take it to the king. I'm going to pray. Music ministry is going to share. Those are your three invitations. Come to your life, Jesus Christ. Come be a part of this family of faith. Come, come to the altar. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you and we love you. Move as only you can. You are God and there is no other. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Come. Come.
Right, right, right. Speak a word and you will be here. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. I you have to, have to encourage yourself.
Amen. We got some brothers down here dealing. Don't let them deal with what they're dealing with. Did not our hearts burn? Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Come on, baby. I know we got some stuff. Good morning. Good morning. In the life group, we talked today about what it, one of the things that a leader would need in order to lead. And, and it's, we need people that will be the air underneath our wings that will encourage us to continue to lead. So today, Nag Bible had a breath of fresh air to come in with Josiah. This guy has been burning up SFA campus. That football team, God, I'm going to just be honest. When he came to me on January, back in January, and uh, Pastor looked at me and said he need a place to stay. I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know this brother. That was my first response. This boy, this man, came into my house with a breath of fresh air that we needed here at NAC Bible. And I'm telling you, he has been bringing uh, players. He has been bringing students. He has gotten our college ministry up and running. And he didn't even know just your presence just you being obedient has led this brother, Jaheim Mullen, slick, one of his players. I thought, Josiah has just been living the life. That's all. He's just been living the life. And because he's been living the life, Slick has just decided that he would just come and live the life with him. And in the process, he decided, Pastor said, you need to come on and walk down. So in obedience, he said he was going to come and walk down. But as I'm sitting here talking to him today, he says, I, I need to be baptized.